So here's the idea. We're going to build a hollow desk and then put a PC inside of it so it's completely hidden. The PC will be accessed by a channel in the back of the desk where there's access to the motherboard, GPU, and power outlets, so anything on top of the desk, like a keyboard or a monitor for example, can plug right in. There's three slots on the top and bottom of the desk where cables can route into the back channel. The purpose of this is for perfect cable management, and the only single cord that'll come out of the desk is the power cord, with the exception of an optional ethernet cable. There's also some access to the PC on the front of the desk in case you need to do something quickly, like use a flash drive or pop in an SD card for example. This is also where the power button is. One of my favorite features, a wireless charger, will be on the top of the desk and hidden underneath a layer of veneer. Lastly, the airflow will be managed by intake and exhaust vents that are cut into the bottom of the desk, and the bottom is also removable so the PC components can be upgraded or replaced at any time. Before we begin, I want to say this design was inspired by a YouTuber by the name of DIY Perks, and you can check out his desk PC build in the description. Okay, so the first thing we want to do for the whole build is cut the top and bottom aluminum plates. To do this, we were lucky enough to get access to a water jet CNC from my college. This machine uses an extremely high pressured stream of water mixed with minerals to accurately cut through almost any material. Our eighth of an inch aluminum sheets, for example, were a piece of cake. This thing can cut through inches of aluminum if we wanted it to. With access to the water jet, we were able to cut out everything we needed, such as the vents, screw holes, cable slots, and the cutout for the wireless charger. The vents we cut out are for 120 millimeter intake and exhaust fans, as well as for the GPU and power supply intake fans. To finish up, we countersunk all of the screw holes. Now the aluminum sheets are completely done and it's time to move on to the wooden frame. We started off by cutting each board to size, which is 2.75 inches. This will be the thickness of the desk. Next, we cut them to length and can move on to the CNC router. This machine allows us to accurately cut everything we need into the wood and we started off by cutting in the lip that hides the metal plates as well as some pilot holes for the threaded inserts. Once completed, the inserts were added and these pieces now fit perfectly around the aluminum plates. Next, we cut into the removable panel so it can slot into the back of the desk. This one was pretty simple. Moving on, the next cut is the back support beam. This is where all of the outlets will be, as well as the cutouts that give access to the GPU and motherboard. The cut fits the outlets perfectly into place, and to finish this piece off, we used a roundover bit with an actual handheld router to give the cutouts a nice fillet around the edges. Lastly, we cut out the indentations for all of the front I.O. components. This includes a USB-A, USB-C, SD card reader, and the power button. And with that completed, every wooden component of the desk is now good to go, and we're ready to start assembling it and begin on the electrical work. We began by permanently attaching the top plate to all of the boards that make up the frame. Next, we wired all the outlets together along with the power cord. This was done in what's called a parallel circuit, so if one goes out, the rest still work. For the wireless charger, we simply mounted a piece of wood under the cutout to use as a backer. But with that done, we now have power in the back channel as well as in the wireless charger. To finish things up, we mounted the removable panel in the back, which clicks in and out of place with these latches installed on both sides. And now we're ready to begin installing the PC components. For this build, we're using an AMD 5600X CPU paired with a B550 motherboard and 16 gigs of RAM. For the GPU, a Founders Edition 3070 and a 650 watt small form factor power supply. For cooling, we're using a liquid AIO and some Noctua fans. Lastly, for storage, we're keeping it simple with an M.2 drive so we don't have to worry about mounting a drive anywhere. To start off, we installed standoffs for the motherboard and GPU bracket and then the bracket itself. Now all the components can be installed. Once everything was installed and plugged in, we cleaned it up with some cable management zip ties, and now the PC is fully operational. We still need to mount the fans and mesh, however, which will all be done on the bottom plate. Before doing so, we painted it black. To finish things up, we prepped the surface for the veneer, which involved filling screw holes and spraying sealant on the edges so the veneer would stick a lot better to the wood. The veneer came next and we used a piece that had pressure sensitive backing, which sticks really well to metal and worked perfectly for us. After that, the overhang was trimmed off with a flush router bit and we gave it a good sanding. Next was staining and we went with a red mahogany color. After that, a satin clear coat was applied and we gave it another final sand. Now all that's left is to put on the legs and we're done.
As you can see, the cables route perfectly into the desk, making for an extremely minimal and organized setup. And the only wires coming out of the desk is for power and ethernet. The wireless charger also works great and I've positioned it to be right next to my keyboard. But that just about sums everything up. We're currently working on a new version that improves upon the design, so stay tuned for that and leave a comment if there's a feature you think we should implement. We also plan on eventually selling these desks with or without PCs inside of them, so if you're interested in keeping up with that, you can sign up for our email list over at incasepc.com where you'll be the first to know when they're available. But that's all, thanks for watching.